time out with him. Oh. Went up your mind and let me in. Went up your mind and let me in. Went up your mind and let me in. Hello, welcome to Time Out with Timo. I'm your host, Tim Owens, as always. Very grateful and happy to be here today. Now, I want to dive into something that no one else is talking about. I want to talk about the world of Black management, really what it means to be a Black male manager. Now, a lot of people have no idea what this experience is like. Let me tell you something. Very, very challenging. Because let me break it down like this. Do you guys know that only 3% of Black men in the workforce are members of upper management? 3%. Very, very low. Now, let me share some of my experiences that I had with being a black male manager in a high position in the company. <laughs> boy, boy, boy. Okay, a few things. Everyone challenges you. Nothing that you say is what it is. I'm talking about everyone. Your employees, um, other managers, vendors, whoever you may have to deal with. No one wants to listen to a black male manager. You have to manage one or two ways. Be completely terrible, treat people just horrible, or let them do whatever they want to do. You can dance in the middle as far as being fair and firm and consistent, but they're going to give you your money's worth. I'm going to you're going to earn every dime that you make. So one experience that I had, right? Was I was a, a member of the management in the company. And every idea that you had, you had to be just, it had to be perfect almost. Any meeting that you held or you were in, everything you said was fact checked and overanalyzed, right? To the point to where this guy right next to you who could be incompetent, nowhere near the skill level that you have, can get away with anything. It's so bad being a black male manager, that a lot of guys quit. they rather not even take the position. The guys are like, what, what, what is this guy talking about? No one ever has ever mentioned this. True. So people love to blame everything on white people. Let me tell you something. I don't play that game. When I tell you it goes from all across the board that no one wants to respect the black male manager. Let me go to some stats here so you guys don't think I'm making this thing this up. So let me go. Let me give me a second to pull this up here. All right. So here we go. This actually comes from the Spectrum News, right? It says black men struggling to obtain senior management positions. Black representation in top Wall Street jobs are extremely rare, as we all know. While black people make up 10% of entry level positions, the higher the ascent, the lower the representation. See, nobody's talking about this. Black representation in top Wall Street jobs remain extremely rare. That's just one field. Black executives hold only 3% of senior management positions. And that's across the board, right? So after the death of George Floyd, corporate America invested in changing this racial makeup. If you really want to see the cadence change from recruiting talent, developing, retaining talent, these are 10 to 15 year odysseys before you start to see more meaningful change. Businessman Colbert Narcisse said. So get this. So there's one persistent structural issues because it is very subjective in terms of who gets the opportunity and who does not. Let me, it was one important part. I'm not going to read this whole thing, but it's one important part that I want to point out. So it says here, uh, let me see. Narcisse says he has overachieved to dispel assumptions. Now listen at that. He had to overachieve to get the same respect as a lot of other, other executives got. So are you good at math? What were your SAT scores? What were your GMAT scores? So almost have to legitimize your skills, Narcy said. What I did was over index. I met with people and said, I only want to do analytical assignments. After a stint as a bank examiner at the Federal Reserve Bank in New York, Narcisse signed on to join Merrill Lynch in 1992. 
He rose the ranks and became the first black associate ever to reach the level of managing director in 2004. It was humbling, but it was also, you know, quite, I will say, infuriating, sad. You were dismayed because I know that there were a lot of very talented people, more talented than myself, who could have easily done that, but were not given the same opportunities. Speaking of other black men, Narcy said. One thing that I'm going to add to this. I definitely understand um, Mr. Narcisse's experience, right? But I think that and um, someone who's in a higher management position, a black woman said to me that, well, a lot of people aren't used to black men being in high positions. So it's not so much everyone is challenging to you. It's just something that's not a norm. It's something that they're not used to seeing. It made a lot of sense to me. So when I thought about some of the experiences that I had, that is 1% true. That they do challenge you and they do come for you, but however, it's something that's out of the norm. So maybe a lot of brothers that are working in these places that's been in entry level positions, uh, positions for 20 years or 15 years who say that I know I worked for a place back in 2018 and I rose up pretty fast. And another uh, gentleman who started the same day that I did, he's still there doing the exact same job that we did together back in 2018. And he said he's fine where he is, but he used to complain about people who get the higher positions. But I moved up in that company and I moved on from there and I've been long gone from there, but he's still in the same spot. I'm saying this to say, maybe if more black men take advantage of management positions that are offered to them, because I don't think it's not it's not so much about the job experience, the qualifications, the know how of the job. I think it is such a foreign territory for a lot of black men to get into that they'd rather not do it. And I think there are other black men who are in high level positions. They need to talk to some of these guys and explain that, hey, listen, this is something that's achievable. This is something that you can do. And it's not a racial thing. It's not It's not a racism thing at all. Um, that has nothing to do with it. I think that it's, well, hold on, let me back up, let me back up, let me back up. There may be some racial elements to it, but it's not strictly based upon like a racism position of where I don't want to give you this job because I'm racist. No, no, no. It's not that. It's a different element to it. There's a there's a lack of understanding of how black men operate in the workplace for one. One thing I'm gonna say is a lot of people don't understand. <laughs> this is this is a little humorous, but some people may not find it that way. Most of the time, uh, black men in the workplace. Do not get involved in workplace gossip. Do not get involved in, hey, you hurt this person getting this promotion or they changed this policy. We kind of want to come to work and mind our business and kind of do our thing and go home. We may talk to a few people here and there, but some people take that as he's not invested. He doesn't care about the job. He's not personable. He's not a people person. Because I had that tag put on me when I was younger in, in the workplace. That wasn't it. We just don't want to stir the pot at work. And I think sometimes that allows some people to be overlooked for certain promotions because they'll say, hey, we didn't think you wanted that position because you never said anything. You never done anything. But I think that a lot of black men are more traditional in a sense of work to where they want the opportunity to be offered to them. Like, hey, Michael, I've observed your work for the last six months or to a year. I think you'll be great you will be great in this new role here. And I think that's what some guys kind of wait on. And I think if more companies put people in position that operate like that, that could help change the tide as far as black men not being in management positions, because it can be very challenging. But um, I don't want to go too long about this, but if you guys, maybe this was something to spark a conversation. Maybe if you have a family member, a father, brother, son, whoever, who may be a black male in a management position or thinking about one, maybe you guys can do some research and reach out to some other men that are in these positions. Maybe they can give them give you guys some insights on the steps to take. I mean, you can email me. I'm more than welcome to answer any questions you may have. But it's definitely a conversation that needs to be had, something that needs to be talked about. So, you know, I started off a little rough a little bit there, kind of getting in, diving off the, the deep end there. But I hope I was able to swim my way out of it and we get a little bit more of a mutual understanding going. So as always, thank you for watching my content. Hit the like button, subscribe to my channel if you have if you have not. As always, happy people do not cause problems. Peace.
If everybody winning, who's losing? Who's losing? I'm trying to make it make sense. It's like it's so confused. Yeah, so I see the pain in your eyes from all the lonely nights. I swear I know how it feel. It just don't feel right.